Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. We are live once again here on YouTube, Facebook, and on Rumble for our normal Monday live show. But eh, we've been live a lot this week because there's been a lot of stuff going on for the Cowboys. It's been a more active offseason than we are accustomed to. So grade the Cowboys offseason so far. A, B, C, D, or F. It is the pinned comments. On today's video, you guys can vote on that on both the Facebook and the YouTube side, or just comment from that standpoint. 56% say A, 40% are voting B on that front. As these come in, a super chat, $2 from Matt Evans, B. John Robinson, you are a cowboy. Maybe he's a cowboy. Uh, if the Cowboys can take care of all of their needs, which they might be able to, uh, they're not that far away. Maybe a guard, some defensive linemen. I am much more amenable to adding a running back in round one, despite the positional value. I still wonder if Bijan Robinson's going to get to you. Why do I feel like he's going to be a commander when it's all said and done? So grade the Cowboys off. He's an A, B, C, D, or F. Fifty. I said off season, so that does include the Stephon Gilmore Cooks trades. The Cowboys technically haven't signed anybody in outside free agency, but when you trade for two starters, I am okay with that. Unlike last year's, we'll see if they sign James Washington stuff. Uh, Fifty-six percent say A. Forty-one percent say B. Three percent say C. 1% are going G or F in there, which I think is accurate for, for what things are at. Some A-pluses in there, too. Uh, Steve is right. The long snapper did jump to the uh, to the Lions. Okay. I mean, it's a long snapper. Ideally, the, the, the ideal job for a long snapper. You sign, you make the roster, we talk about you making the team, and then we never say your name again the rest of the season. That's, that's the ideal outcome there. So... A's, A's, B's in there. Some more Super Chats here. We'll hit these. Brandon J, Grady Jarrett trade. Make it happen, uh, Jerry. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, the, the, the Falcons could trade him if they wanted to. They seem to think they're a little bit closer than what maybe they think they should feel. Um, his cat is $16.5 million salary. I don't think the Cowboys are going to want to pay that. So I think he ends up sticking around in Atlanta for one more year. Clayton Boatman, Sean Robinson, or Jonathan Hankins? Uh, I'd probably go Hankins because I, I know what he does and what he can, how he can help out the, uh, the Cowboys. I wouldn't be mad at Sean Robinson, don't get me wrong, but Sean is also not the guy he was at his beginning of his career he's kind of slowed down a little bit only played in 10 games he's missed some time the past couple seasons so I'm fine with either fits my fatties only agenda but I think I'd rather have Hankins I think it's cheaper and I know what he is from that standpoint now name a player who you guys want to sign in NFL free agency Cowboys by the way as we get into is in our rumors and news roundup here um has uh and you have to handle the community here by the way Patrick since no, he's not. Cut doesn't start for another 20 minutes. Whatever. Um, the Cowboys not signed anyone on the outside yet. They brought in three players for, for visits today. We'll see if, when those guys get signed. Ronald Jones, Travian Howard, Shuma Adoga. Any player you want to sign in free agency? There's Bobby Wagner. Dalton Schultz is in there. There's a Des Bryant in there because, of course, they is. Uh, Hankins. And, unless I missed Hankins to the Lions, I know the long snappers signed with the Lions. Let, let me double check here unless something happened in the last 20 minutes, but I don't think anything happened here. Uh, I think you're mixing up. Yeah, I think, I think you're mixing up uh, the long snapper. Matt, Matt Overton signed with the Lions. Not, not Hankins. All right, Matt Evans, $5. Thank you, Matt. Am I the only one that thinks it's odd? We haven't signed any free agents from the team. Just throws me off. It is odd. I am less mad than I would have been this time last year because you made two significant trades for Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore. That operates about the same for me. This is the off-season talent acquisition period, if that's the phrase you want to use instead of free agency. I'm sure they'll sign some outside free agents, but given the history, I can't be mad at getting Cooks and Stephon Gilmore. Flawless victory in gaming and or gaming and entertainment. Cooks, what's going on with Alarcone to the defensive line? So Isaac Alarcone is moving to the defensive line. Uh, he got some run there last year. 
uh, as in, in terms of like practice squad stuff. So he's no longer an offensive lineman. Now he's a defensive lineman. We'll see if he ends up making the team or or not. He is now out of uh, player pathway exemptions. Could still be a practice squad candidate for you, though. From J Buzz, is Schultz getting a deal? Can we get him back? Schultz has not had a very good free agency. Um, had he got to the open market last year, he probably would have commanded 14 or so million dollars per year, or at least uh, getting the David and Joku deal for himself. Uh, he turned down, I believe it was about 12 from the Cowboys last year, and the Cowboys have kind of moved on. The tight end market's been non-existent because the draft class is so loaded, and Schultz has not found the interest that he wants uh, so far. He might sign a one-year deal and try to cash in again next season. So do you want to bring back Dalton Schultz on that front? Y for yes, N for no. You guys can sound off for me in the comment section of the show. I'll give some shout-outs here, too. Yes or no, the money will be much cheaper, which I think will be appealing there. But do you want to make the move to Hendershot, Ferguson, insert draft pick here? I get it. Uh, no, yes, 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 no. Uh, Joe Yancey, the wondering Mexican. Leroy Pearson, say no. Uh, yes is from Corbin, Travis, Tar Heel, Steve, Franklin. Leroy says no. Ecuador Man says no. Presley says yes. MNZ Games says yes. There you go. You want to bring back Schultz? Why for yes and for no? Zeno saying five dollars. Thank you, Zeno. If the Dallas Cowboys sign someone else in free agency outside help like Bobby Wagner, maybe working on a, on a DeAndre Hopkins trade. I say Jerry went all in. The Hopkins trade's not going to happen by getting Cooks. That you're you're not going to go trade for Hopkins now as well. Wagner, if the price is low enough, maybe. I think defensive line slash offensive line is their next focal point. Then it'll be draft and a bunch of UDFAs. Leroy Pearson Jr., long snapper Matt Overton is going to return. Wouldn't be overly surprised he filled in when Jake McQuaid got hurt last year. I think Trent Sieg, the recent Raiders release, also a good name to consider there. The Cowboys have been more active than normal in free agency. I'm thinking maybe five-ish guys, somewhere in that range, uh, could still potentially sign with Dallas. That'll get them to their normal figures that they like uh, to the, for the 90-man roster limit. That would put them with... You know, they tend to do 15 and 5. Uh, they got seven picks this year. So somewhere in that 4 to 5 range uh, is a think about where they want to settle in. Uh, when it comes to the draft, that's where they're going to spend some big time here. Get to that question. Well, first, some more super chats. Brandon J. Really hate the thought of using a first on a tight end. I mean, I'd rather use it on a tight end than a running back. But uh, that's, that's my concern. Um, it's not the best positional value usage overall, and the classes are really deep. You know, if there were like two good tight ends, if the class just had, you know, Dalton Kincaid and Michael Mayer, I'd probably be more inclined to take them. But there's a lot of other guys in a very strong class that makes me a bit hesitant to do that. Clayton Boatman, $5. Could Neville Gallimore actually be training? Uh, that's why I haven't signed a defensive tackle. Uh, you're going to sign a defensive tackle because at minimum, you don't have the bodies right now. Your you're only defense lineman under contract are now uh, Quinton Bohanna, Neville Gallimore, Os Odegizua, and, of course, the now position chains, Isaac Alarcon. So you need bodies up there. I think it's just a timing hasn't happened yet. They will sign some defensive linemen. Marcus Arnold, first and a fourth for Quinton Williams. Jets say no. I think that the Jets are all in on Aaron Rodgers. They're, they're trying to win football games right now. Trading away Quinnen for a late one and a four doesn't help them accomplish that. I love Quinnen Williams. Don't get me wrong. I would love to acquire him. I don't foresee the Jets giving him up. Michael Sutton, five more dollars. He had to choose two between Lamb, Diggs, and Parsons. Who you choosing? I don't know if we can afford all three. You can afford all three. The salary cap went up $16 million this year. It's up like 27 or something the past two years. It is going to continue to climb as all these TV deals continue to pay massive money to the NFL. You can absolutely afford all three. My order, though, is Micah, Lamb, and Diggs. That would be my order in the event you could only choose two, but you can afford all three. J Buzz, what's the gap between Bijan and Gibbs? Uh, early first, late first. That's kind of my, my grades there. I think Bijan is a better pure runner. I think Gibbs still is a bit more of a third down type of uh, guy. I don't know if he can handle the same workload Bijan can, but he is an awesome prospect as well. 
Trenton Huffman, need to sign Puna Ford, draft uh, Kuntz from Old Dominion. That's Zach Kuntz. I that's how you pronounce his last name. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm down. Now, Kuntz's size and athletic profile have not matched the on-field play, but I, I would have interest in, in taking him if you don't take a tight end early and taking care of Puna Ford to help out your fatties only on, on the defensive line. Ride with Lucky Clay. That's Lucky Clay Gig Services. I feel like we should be fix the trenches, O-line or D-line. I think that's your next focal point. Whether it's re-signing some of your own players, adding an outside free agent, I think offensive line is the next spot, and defense line is where the Cowboys address next. Clarence Mobley, $2. Thank you, Clarence. I, I appreciate that. Very kind of you. We are all caught up now on the Super, so a question for you guys. What is your confidence level in the Cowboys' ability to draft good players? players scale it for me from one to ten they've done a pretty decent job relative to the rest of the nfl doesn't mean it's perfect they've had issues there in the past so grade it one to ten round two especially if, if, if we take out round two and maybe we all feel a lot better they've, they've done pretty good in round one uh 6.9 8 7 8 7 4 7 8 6 7 8 6 8 9 9 9 8 Eight, eight, seven, six, nine, six, seven, nine, seven and a half, eight, eight, nine, seven, five, six point six, six point nine. Just the one to end on. Hector Garcia, ten dollars. Thank you, Hector. I don't think we should draft a first round tight end. Jake Ferguson, we're giving a shot, has been that guy, or first round tight end. Uh, been that guy, which is very rare in rookies. I want to see more chances for him. I am I am of the mindset that the Cowboys should simply draft a tight end this year doesn't have to be in round one but I do think at some point this Cowboys team it, it, because it is such a great class it does make sense to draft that tight end now I do think we're overhyping Ferguson a little bit he had 19 catches for 174 yards and two scores I think you want to add another tight end but if you want to wait because it's such a strong class I am totally fine with that as well Boondock Saint, I know Bijan is a number one. What is Roshan? I think he's fourth round. He got a fourth round grade for me, I think, as a rotation back. I actually like his fit a lot with Tony Pollard. They play very different styles, so I like that blending. I think Bijan in round one or Roshan in the fourth, it's not bad there. Leroy Pearson Jr. Is Fowler still a candidate to be resigned? I want Hankins back. Does sound like the Cowboys want to bring back both of those players. I think Hankins is a bigger priority for them at this point uh, than Fowler is, but I wouldn't be surprised if at least Hankins or both of those guys are back with the Dallas Cowboys this year. G. Sal, wouldn't a first round back be good, low cost, five or uh, five year option? Here, here's the problem: short term contract, it's fine. Ish, especially at the back end of round one, it does start to make a little bit more sense. But that running back is going to want to be paid after three years, four years, whatever. Even if you go the franchise tag route, they're, they're, they're going to do what Zeke did, as they should, try to get paid. And if you're drafting a player in round one to only have them for five years, that's not a good draft pick. That, the Cowboys said that, that they view that as a failure. They, they want a 10-year guy, which is, is reasonable. So if you want to take a four-year uh, rental, do that on day two or day three. Clarence Mobley, can we get Robbie Gould for kicker? Maybe. He's still unsigned as of filming. I don't know if you should, as good as Robbie Gould has been, he is very age or old. I don't know if you want to pay big money to an old kicker not named Justin Tucker. Ignatius Pennyfeather the ninth. Would you rather uh, Kenny McIntosh or Keaton Mitchell? So I got McIntosh as a fourth and I got Mitchell a little bit low behind him, or lower behind him in that fifth round range. Didn't love how McIntosh tested. Both guys profile as a third down back. Now, McIntosh was used more actually downfield. That's why I gave him the advantage. Um, there's some special teams value there. Mitchell's pretty damn fast from what I saw. It was a great job of making guys miss tackles. I think Mitchell brings you more juice. I think McIntosh brings you some more third down value. Marcus Arnold, what's your opinion of Blake Corum? Well, he's not did not turn pro, otherwise he would have been a another example of the top hundred back in this year's class. MNZ GMZ, Tom Terrific, thank you. 
DE second round. If the right guy's there, sure. Uh, I don't know if you want another second round pick, but I also know Dan Quinn will get to take one of his guys at some point within the first three rounds. Eric Montoya. Tom, are there any left side O-line guys in free agency that you would see as a good get? I think Dalton Reisner would appeal to me. Isaiah Wynn as a it, kind of a buy low swing tackle guard combination as your super sixth offensive lineman. I'm intrigued by that. There are some offense linemen I'm surprised are still unsigned. Maybe they could bring you decent value. Brett Stevens. I think Schultz comes back the longer he goes unsigned. The longer he goes unsigned, the better chance of him returning. I still think that number is low. Uh, I think that unless, unless his number comes down pretty low uh, from just a value perspective and what he's asking for, I think that number's low, but I thought he'd be signed by now. We're a week into free agency-ish. I think that does potentially help the Cowboys' chances if they want to retain Schultz, but longer he goes, better chance. Still low for me at this point. All right, if you are ready for us to get today's show started, like the video right now. We have 89 people who have liked it, almost 700 people watching live right now. Those are rookie numbers. we got to pump those numbers up. Oof, I don't like the concurrent viewer number. That's kind of an evil number there. Get us to at least 200 likes. Uh, that's We're not even asking, not even 50% today, just a fraction of it. 200 likes, and we'll get today's show started. If you haven't already, it's a simple, free, easy thing you can do. Tells YouTube you like what we're doing, you'll see our stuff more, and YouTube will show it to more people as well so we can continue to grow the number one Dallas Cowboys YouTube channel here on Chat Sports. 163, we're going to blow by the 169 number there. I kind of bet we are. 167. We're at 669 watching, though. That's pretty cool. Oh, I just changed. There we go. All right, like the video. Here's what's coming up on today's Cowboys report. The latest Cowboys rumors. Free agency targets. The top names who are still available as of right this second. A Cowboys Q&A. You can get your questions in via Super Chat or using hashtag Cowboys. And we'll run through some Cowboys draft targets. All the trades. The Stephon Gilmore, the Brandon Cooks trades have very much changed the Cowboys' draft possibilities here. We'll break that down all here live on the Cowboys Report. Today's Cowboys Report is made possible by Kinzuri. If you are a short king, if you're trying to get the ultimate height hack in your shoes, Kinzuri is the answer. 15% off on top of their up to 30% site-wide sale at Kinzuri.com slash chat when you use promo code chat. More on them later on in today's show. Let's begin with the future of one Dalton Schultz. Surprisingly, Schultz remains unsigned, and the Cowboys have been prepared this offseason to move on from Dalton Schultz. But the longer he goes unsigned, the better chance there is that the Cowboys and Schultz say, you know what, let's get back together for a year and see what ends up happening. I wonder if a cheap one-year deal could be in the cards if the market drops as low as it has for other tight ends, such as um, Mike Kosicki. But I saw guys get $7 million who aren't good at tight end. Who the Vikings sign again, Patrick? Josh Oliver got seven millions. At least it was announced as seven. That makes no sense. Schultz is way better than Josh Oliver. Unfortunately for Schultz and others at the position, the tight end market is bad. The tight end market has not been a, a, a strong result so far at the, at the grouping. And I think it's in large part due to a strong draft class that has brought down the interest in players like Dalton Schultz, or at least the offers for a player like Schultz. There is a chance still for a return. Uh, there aren't that many teams in the obvious market for a tight end. Green Bay stands out. They're maybe taking one in round one. The Bengals could be a great one-year buy low, go cash out next offseason because uh, you get to get one-on-one -on -one matchups nonstop, which you didn't always get this year. But a return is possible, if still a bit unlikely, for the Dallas Cowboys and Dalton Schultz. Schultz was a lot better in 2021. 2022, missed some time. Also, big difference in his production with Cooper Rush versus Dak Prescott. And I do believe there was a path or an offer for Schultz 
probably from Dallas, around the $12 million range. I think that was last year. And David Njoku got more than what Dalton Schultz was offered in that three-year reported $36 million deal, according to Albert Breer. Understandable, he wanted to cash in and get more. He ain't going to get more. Uh, he's not going to get $12 million open market. He might not even get 10 might get more like 7 from that standpoint. And the Cowboys have tight ends. Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot. Heck, Sean McEwen is your three or your four. It's actually a pretty good grouping. And given how great the tight end class is this year, maybe you want to take one and say, Schultz, you know what? We love you. We appreciate everything you did for us. We're going to go in a much cheaper and younger direction. So what do you want to do? Do you want to bring back Dalton Schultz? Yes or no, you can sound off for me at the pinned comments of today's video. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there. Yes or no, do you want to bring back Dalton Schultz? To summarize some of the pros and cons, right? He clearly works well with Dak Prescott. That chemistry is there. And it's there in a way that, you know, it wasn't there for Russian Schultz. He is still a quality tight end option. Is he a superstar? No. Is he a replacement level player? No, and the cost should be lower now. There would also be more money spent at the tight end position, and that's maybe not something Dallas wants to do. Would stop your young guys from playing, and it's a loaded tight end class. You don't have to re-sign Schultz because you can get a good player, I believe, in the draft. I would also wonder if there's some, maybe this is all speculation, some bad blood to an extent, to an extent with Schultz and the Cowboys because Schultz... Could have gotten, he could have gotten $14 million last offseason. I think the Jets would have given it to him. Doesn't hit the open market. Has to play on the franchise tag for a year. Tries to cash in this offseason. And now is sitting with, hey, he might get less than he got franchise tag for. That is unideal for a player of Schultz's caliber. Some more rumors coming up and news too. But first, today's Cowboys report is presented by Kinzuri. If you're tired of feeling insecure about your hype, Height, excuse me. Kinzuri makes shoes and adds a 2.8 inches to your height discreetly. Women get heels, makeup, push-up bras, so why can't men get a confidence boost too? We're all the same height lying down anyway, if you know what I mean. Kinzuri shoes not only height boosting, but also stylish and comfortable. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes, but fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. The height insoles are built into the shoes. So it's the ultimate height hack. For a limited time, Kinzuri is offering our viewers an exclusive 15% on top of their up to 30% site-wide discount. Use code CHAT, that's C-H-A-T, at Kinzuri.com slash to get up to 45% off. Don't wait any longer. Upgrade your shoe game and confidence at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I.com slash chat. If you want to get high, put on a pair of Kinzuri's. Link to that is in the comment section and the description of today's show. Again, that is 15% off on top of the up to 30% discount going on with Kinzuri. Check out today again. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. Kinzuri.com slash chat. Time for some free agency. More news here. The Cowboys have three players in for visits today. That is on Monday, March 20th. Ronald Jones, the former Chiefs and Bucks back. Chuma Adoga, the Jets offensive lineman, former Jets and Falcons offensive lineman, I should say. Traven Howard, the former Rams linebacker. These would be what I would call their, their, their Trojan signings. They, they are protection just in case something doesn't go the way you planned it to go. Uh, from that standpoint, these are we don't these guys might not even get a, a roster or contract that guarantees them a roster spot. It could be a one year vet men for 25% guaranteed, making them cuttable if they need to be during the actual uh, preseason training camp. It just means you don't have to take a premium player in the first couple of rounds, but if the board falls the way you want it to. It doesn't stop you from taking that type of player. It's, it's the protection signing there. Ronald Jones flashed in 2020. I was a big fan of his game coming out of USC. He had the explosiveness that, that I loved and then quickly fell out of favor again in Tampa and barely played at all for the Chiefs. He would not cost you very much money. Chuma Dogu, the Cowboys had been briefly linked to when the Tyron Smith injury happened as a 
maybe trade target at various points throughout. Uh, Adoga in for a visit. Not the best career stats, but he's played all over the offensive line. I wouldn't call him your sixth offensive lineman, but if he's like your seventh or eighth lineman, maybe ninth too, then it starts to make some sense. Traven Howard briefly overlapped with Bones Fossil in Los Angeles as a predominantly special teamer. And with Luke Gifford now a free agent, there's your Jabril Cox, Devin Harper bonus insurance. Uh, in the event that they sign, you know, we'll, we'll see what the contracts look like for their uh, roster spot being guaranteed there. But name a player who you want to sign in NFL free agency. Maybe it's a bigger name than three admittedly lesser names from that standpoint. Sound off for me in the comments section. While you're down there, make sure you guys are subscribed. When the Cowboys make moves, we make the news videos. Hit that sub button for free ones multiple times per day. You got three today, including the live. Probably two tomorrow, two throughout the week there. Don't miss out on anything Cowboys related. YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. I did want to probably for the last time briefly mention the Odell Beckham situation. Uh, the Cowboys, of course, have long been linked to uh, Odell Beckham. The signing of Brandon Cook, or the trade, I should say, excuse me, the trade for Brandon Cooks, my bad, uh, basically takes the Cowboys out of the running. You're, you're not going to pay OBJ and be paying Brandon Cooks and got Gallup and got Lamb. That just isn't, unless there's an injury to somebody, knock on wood, that's not going to be a path that they end up pursuing there. So all of the OBJ drama appears over. And with what you have at wide receiver, outside of a draft pick, you know, maybe you re-sign T.Y. Hilton to a cheap one-year deal. Let him compete for the wide receiver four role alongside a guy like a Jalen Tolbert, a Kevontae Turpin. I think if you do re-sign Hilton, it puts Simi Fihoko in kind of a dangerous spot roster-wise. You could still draft somebody if the right guy falls to you, but now you don't have to take a wide receiver early on, especially if you end up do re-signing Hilton, which we'll see on that standpoint there. In the end, I like trading for Cooks over signing Odell Beckham. I think Cooks is a safer player, as weird as that might sound with the concussion history and the down year, but he's going from Davis Mills and Kyle Allen and Jeff Driscoll to Dak Prescott. That is a massive upgrade at the quarterback spot for Brandon Cooks. Time for some other Cowboys free agency updates. Dante Fowler and Jonathan Hankins are on the Cowboys list per uh, the Dallas Morning News of players they would like to re-sign. I am curious what Dante Fowler and or Hankins would end up commanding on the open market. Fowler did have six sacks last year. Really cooled off down the stretch, just like Dorrance Armstrong did. Um, Hankins was a big boost for you on the defensive line as a run stopper. I'm down to bring them back. As long as the cost is appropriate, that's especially more for Fowler. I think $3 million max for me because he's going to be my number four or five edge. I can find that guy pretty cheaply elsewhere and or in the draft. One more news item, Jake McQuaid is gone. The long snapper who had been here for two years, got hurt this year, uh, is now a member of the Detroit Lions. They have signed him. Matt Overton is a free agent, by the way. Keep note of that one. He could come back. And Todd Archer also mentioned Trent Sieg, who had been recently released by the Raiders as a possible long snapper candidate. Remember the rules of long snapper. We discuss you when you sign, when you make the roster, and then never again in the season or something probably went terribly wrong. All right, let's talk March Madness here, Patrick, if you want to unmute yourself here and chime in. Uh, is your bracket already busted? You guys at home chime in. Why for yes and for no? Is your bracket already busted? Yours is okay, Patrick. I'm okay right now, but for the most part, it's pretty much busted. I don't, I've lost three Final Four teams. It's okay, brutal. Uh, March Madness, it gets you every year. You think you know basketball. You just find out you really don't. It just comes down to kids hitting threes. But, yeah, my bracket, it's so, not as going as well so as I thought. Everyone's bracket is busted. Like, yeah. two, two one seeds are already out. Like, everyone's, everyone's is busted. Yeah. Arizona, you, like... You are in the 70.4 percentile right now. I'll uh, take it. Now, I'll, you have Xavier winning it all. <laughs> yes, I have which, Xavier Which was a Musketeers. homer pick, and I respect you for it. Yeah. They, they are not going to win it all. They're going to win it all. The, uh, there are 19 brackets in the, uh, in the chat sports bracket pool this year. I don't know if everyone actually did theirs. Um, all but four of them are in the top 50 
percentile still. Look at us. Sperry's at 21.4. He's, he's at a rough go. But, but his oh, champion's geez. still alive there. Uh, do you know who's in first? Is it you? It's me. Tom's in first. Me. I, That's incredible. I won last year, too. Back I'm, to I, back, Tom? 96.8%. Jeez. Now, the, the nice part is a lot of us pick Bama, which isn't a huge surprise. A couple UCLA's, uh, a Gonzaga from Will, Who's Texas. Who's your winner? I, I have Bama. Oh, you do Bama? And there's okay. enough differences elsewhere that Bama will end up being okay. So I, I, I had Bama and Houston as, as my ones who were still in it. So it's been, uh, it been fun. Is your it bracket is. busted? Why for yes and for no? Let's go quickly through these super chats here that came in. Yeah. And we can always re-hit them again in, in the in the. Mailbag, too. Uh, Marcus Arnold, trade Dak for Lamar. Tell me why, why not? Ignoring the money aspect where you just restructured Dak to, to get his cap hit down this year, but that would money that you would, be, you would owe him if you traded him still. Uh, ignoring the fact that Lamar wants even more money. If, if the money magically worked, I think what we're frustrated about is the lack of ideal playoff success for Dak Prescott, right? That's the, mm. and, and I think at some level, we are assigning... 27 years of blame onto this current team, which are or 27 years of, of utility, which isn't fair, but I, I get where we're coming from there. The solution then is Lamar Jackson, who has had worse playoff success than Dak Prescott. Yeah. So that's my concern. I, I think in general, and maybe it's just because it's our team, we tend to assign different standards for different players and the standard that Dak Prescott has held up to, whether it's by us or by just big media, is not the same across the board. Mm -hmm. there, is, there are a handful of active quarterbacks who have had more playoff success than, than Prescott. We're talking the Rodgerses. I, I guess you can include Jalen Hurts now in that conversation. The, the Joe Burrows, the, the Mahomeses. It, it's a pretty small list. Uh, it's basically, these guys are your top five quarterbacks, right? Yeah. That's not what Dak Prescott is. I think Lamar is, is a just as good, if not better, than Dak. But all the concerns you have about Prescott, hey, the injuries, uh, passing, for example, uh, Lamar's are actually even. It's just it's a, it's a bigger concern there. So I think it's six of one, maybe six point five of the other instead of a half dozen. But you're in the exact same ballpark there, so the cost to acquire it doesn't make much sense. Leroy Pearson Jr., Stephen Jones is definitely going to lowball Schultz now. Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, yeah, he is. Not that about that one. Will Marshall. Hello, Will. Hey, Tom, you are the man. Thank you, Will. Following Gilmore, who is the odd man slash men out of the crowded defensive backfield room? Assuming C.J. Goodwin makes your roster as a core special teamer, leaves maximum six spots open. Trayvon Diggs, Deron Bland, Jordan Lewis, if we want to count Israel Mukwamu there, that's one of them. Sean Wright, Kelvin Joseph, I don't think they're going to carry on that screen eight of those guys, and you still might draft the corner. So Diggs, Bland are, of course, locks. I think Mukwamu makes it as kind of like your super sub at safety and, and corner. Jordan Lewis can save $4 million w with a release. Sean Wright, Kelvin Joseph, those two are firmly in the playoff roster or, or playoff bubble uh this training camp time the rush bubble it's those guys they might not make it from duh 1534 sam laporta in the third round if he's there i am in it is a great tight end class as i've said before i wonder if he even goes round two i think he he got hamstrung by the iowa offense being in, in a a war crime this year it was a disaster also the worst quarterback in college football history. uh terrible Possibly. quarterback terrible play calling it was not laporta's fault that the numbers are down he he was hamstrung by being stuck on a garbage offense sorry iowa fans but i know that they agree with me zach story on a nine she just uh cowboys get mayor washington kincaid i would probably put the plurality of the odds on one of those three guys maybe it's kincaid um the Cowboys has done a good job in terms of investing uh, in the offseason with other needs. Tight end is a option uh, for the Cowboys early on. And any of those three guys, I'm a big Washington fan. I love Michael Mayer. I'd be fine with Kincaid. Could do a lot worse in round one there. Ecuador man, AOG. Uh, RB market is uh, so soft. Is Pollard tag a mistake? Maybe it's a mistake. Um, I think part of the running back market being soft is – those guys aren't that good. Like the big three players, Barkley, Jacobs, and Pollard, they would have gotten more money than what, you know, Miles Sanders got from the Buffalo Bills. It was not that great of a deal there. Um, 
they, they would have found a way to, to command bigger dollar figures. But I think if you had let Pollard hit the open market coming off the injury, I think you might have been able to find a pretty team-friendly deal to an extent. So mistake that might be a little firm, but not perfect playing of the market. Yes, uh, I, I would agree on that front. This is the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, and with free agency underway, the Cowboys haven't actually signed an outside free agent at this point, but they have been busy and active. We're going to break down the top free agents left for the Dallas Cowboys, beginning with some players who were Cowboys last year that they could still bring back and re-sign. First up is Dalton Schultz. I could see a scenario where the market does not materialize the way he wants it to go. Maybe at that point, they bring back Schultz on a cheaper one-year deal. Jonathan Hankins, next up here, the defensive tackle, a run stopper. I believe the Cowboys want to bring him back. It might just have to be a little bit more patience required uh, for that spot. But I, I, would, I would be a bit surprised, frankly, if Hankins wasn't back in, in Big D. His running mate, Carlos Watkins, who was a practice squad guy to begin the year, but always stepped up when the Cowboys needed him to as a rotational player. I could see him back at the back end of a one-year deal, not much guaranteed money, just like he was previously. Dallas might also hunt for a bigger fish along the defensive line. The Cowboys reportedly want to bring back Dante Fowler, which I'm fine with. Uh, it just has to be affordable. I'm not trying to pay big money to Dante Fowler, who's your fourth or fifth edge rusher. I'm looking maybe one year, $3 million deal, just like he was on. At that point, I do have some interest in uh, bringing back Fowler. I know he had six sacks. The play, the production did very much decline as the year went on. The Cowboys, I think, do like him a little bit. I don't think he's a huge priority, but if the market is right, at that point, I do think the Cowboys would have some interest in bringing back Dante Fowler. Avion Collins, next up here, the offensive lineman guard tackle hybrid. I think it surpassed uh, Josh Ball down the stretch last year. Should be pretty cheap. Would not be surprised if he is back. T.Y. Hilton is next up here for the Dallas Cowboys. The offensive line, or the receiver, excuse me, could come back. He made the 4th the, the and 33, whatever it was, an all-time play, 3rd and 33. Um, made some nice third down catches as well, but at his age, I'm not sure how much he wants to, to play. If he does, cheap one-year deal to be your wide receiver 4-ish, I think could make some sense. Last of the internal players, that is Jason Peters, the offensive tackle who got some guard run there. I think his veteran presence was welcome. I also don't know how much interest exactly there's going to be at his age to continuing to play football and to come back in Dallas. If he does come back, it's going to be a very cheap one-year deal. All right, this will be the pinned comment on today's video. Name a player you want to sign or re-sign, you know, we're a weekend, so any player not under contract, who do you want to bring or bring back to Dallas? It is the pinned comment, like I mentioned, on today's video. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, cool. Take advantage of that ad break. Head down to the pinned comment and let me know a player you want to re-sign or sign straight up in NFL free agency. Bobby Wagner, I think that's going to be a very popular name with that pinned comment here. Still unsigned, the longer he goes without interest makes me think there is a chance at least. The money is what matters here. Dallas will not pay big money to another off-ball linebacker. That's not what they want to do business. They got Vanderbilt, by the way, very cheaply. Longer he goes, maybe a Dan Quinn reunion does still make some sense. But the likelihood all depends on the money. Have to mention Odell Beckham. I'm sorry. I do not think he is a Cowboy. I would be, frankly, surprised in the event that Odell Beckham signs this offseason. I think he wants more money, a bigger deal, and just more playing time than what he'd be able to find in Dallas. Let's hit some fatties here. Puna Ford, first up on the list here. He's 5'11", 3'10". I think he kind of played out of scheme a little bit last year for Seattle. Wasn't as good against the run. Has been a strong run defender in the past. Does offer some pass rush value. Of all the defensive linemen out there, whether with or without Hankins, I would have the most interest in Puna Ford. I think he'd be a great addition on a one- or two-year deal for the Cowboys. Come back to the state of Texas there, Puna. Plus, elite name. 
Ashawn Robinson, who has a visit with the Giants set up, by the way, his production has begun to decline a little bit. Uh, not the guy he was at his prime with the Lions, but he's 6'4", 330. If you're looking for the run stopper, Robinson does still help you in that area. Matt Ioannidis, the former commander and Panther, his numbers have also significantly dipped in recent years. He's got some of that five-tech, three-tech uh, flexibility the Cowboys have always liked in that kind of sort of Tyrone Crawford mold. Uh, to an extent, should be a nice buy-low option for one year. Shelby Harris next up here, the uh, Seahawks slash Denver defensive lineman in, in recent memory there. Cowboys have kind of briefly been linked to him, and then they got traded uh, to Seattle in the end. The Seahawks cut him to make move for, for Draymond Jones. Not the same guy he was in his prime. Again, it'd be a cheap one-year veteran type. Now, Micah Parsons has spent some time recruiting Clayus Campbell on social media. His numbers bumped back up this past year to five and a half sacks. He's not what he was in 2019. He is older, but he brings you the, the, the length and size I think Dan Quinn would covet. He's going to play for a contender only. Dark horse name there for the Dallas Cowboys. Akeem Hicks, who is a definition of a fat, he's listed at 352, did not have the best year for Tampa, had begun to decline in, in Chicago. I'm not sure how much more he has left in the tank. So how many more players will the Dallas Cowboys end up signing? Let me know in the comments section. My over-under, four and a half. But you guys get your predictions in there for me in the comments section right now. Let's hit some defensive ends, if maybe Fowler and or additional help is what you want there. Uh, Floyd got cut by the Rams. I was a bit surprised that was the choice they, they made. Nine sacks, 10 TFLs. He has been a consistent, basically nine-sack guy for the Los Angeles Rams. If he wants to play cheaply, it's got to be a cheap deal for all of these edge rushers. Floyd does make some sense. Genevion Clowney next up. I am actually out on Clowney. Had a good 2021 not a good 2022, and then as on his, before the year ended, was venting about how publicly to media, uh, the Browns aren't trying to win games. They're trying to get Miles Garrett sacks. What they're doing is putting Miles Garrett in better matchups because that's what smart teams do. Dan Quinn does it with Micah Parsons. I'm out on Clowney for his anti-team focused comments. Frank Clark, a.k.a. Frank, I'm only good in the playoffs, Clark. Uh, the numbers have dipped, but he's still a good uh, playoff pass rusher. This could be your buy low, one year, three, three and a half, four million dollar deal if he wants to take that, and then allow him to cash in next off season and get a comp pick. How about Yannick Ngakwe, who has always been an eight sack guy, and you're going, why is the eight sack guy on side? He's not a very good run defender. That is important to always remember, and. I think he wants some big money, and his pressure numbers have dipped. The decline has kind of begun to set in for Unique in terms of his overall production, but I still wouldn't rule him out. And I think his ideal fit is a place like Dallas. Don't put him out there on rundowns. Put him out there on passing downs. Let the man feast. When the Cowboys make moves, we will keep you guys covered. We'll do videos slash go live for these signings, so don't miss out. YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. Free videos. Every single day, sometimes multiple times per day, right here on the Cowboys Report. Bud Dupree, next up on our list. He has battled injuries in recent years, has really hurt his draft stock, or his, not his free agency stock, wrong, wrong time of the year there, Tom. But as a, again, buy-low candidate, I have interest there. How about Carlos Dunlap, who you were kind of briefly linked to at one point? Uh, Bengals and Seahawks. Still a decent run defender, actually. Uh, again, decline is there for Dunlap. This is your cheap Dante Fowler slash fifth edge, whatever you want it to be. How about a Cowboys legend? Robert Quinn next up on our list. Uh, every other year, Robert Quinn is good, and then he's, then he's not good. So time it up correctly. Get him for a year. Just give him one year $2 million whatever it is, and then say, bye, Robert, he'll cash in, and you get a comp pick again. You, you, you could have played that really well. So what you do, what you do with Quinn initially? Traded him for next nothing, got a big comp pick back. Maybe you bring him back on the Chief because he wasn't very good last season. Offensive line time. How about Isaiah Wynn? 
He kind of fell out of favor in New England, but he offers you some tackle on both sides, some guards uh, flexibility there. So if he's willing to be your super sub sixth offensive lineman, I have a lot of interest in him. Donovan Smith was recently cut by the Bucks because he was bad. Uh, he is a former starting left tackle. That makes him worth mentioning since it's tough to trust Tyron Smith. I think the, the decline is already there, though, for Donovan Smith. Of the Cowboys legend, Cam Fleming. There you go. Uh, didn't have a great year for Denver on the right side, but if you want a swing tackle, Fleming does start to make some sense there. To Denver. Again, Dalton Reisner. I am surprised he is unsigned. The numbers were not great. He had a bit of a down year. I think Denver just being a dumpster fire in general on offense was a significant factor in that problem. But if you want to go get a starting left guard, Dalton Reisner is one of the last ones out there. Running backs, Damian Harris, who, again, kind of fell out of favor this year with New England, had almost 1,000 yards in 2021. The running back market is cheap. It is affordable. If you want a one-year deal for 2 or $3 million, I think Harris could potentially be an option for you, but maybe you just want to draft somebody instead. How about Devin Singletary, though? Uh, consistent 4.5-ish yards per carry. Offers you some third down value. I always thought he was underutilized in Buffalo. Singletary, I think it's taking a visit to the Texans as well, by the way. But that name does intrigue me. Again, if you want to sign a running back, I think Harris and Singletary make the most sense. Kareem Hunt, next up, uh, had a really big drop-off of a year. He was not the same player this season. And given his age, with where he, how long he's been in the NFL, I am concerned that Hunt's best days are now behind him. Playoff Lenny was bad this year. Now, we can blame the Bucks' offensive line. That is fair. But the Cowboys just got rid of one of a not great run producing back. Does still offer some pass catching value, but his numbers really dropped off this year. I'm not that interested. I'd, I prefer just to draft a back in the end. Of the positions left for the Cowboys, what is the biggest need still remaining for this organization? Sound off for me in the comments section right now. Want to mention one other tight end, you know, beyond Dalton Schultz, Austin Hooper, if you want to go with the veteran guy, can be that player. Uh, I've often comped Dalton Schultz to Austin Hooper, and I, you can see like 2019, not that different than what we got the past couple of years from Schultz there, but fell off in Cleveland, wasn't that good with the Titans, was kind of just a, a bit role player there. Cheap tight end depth, sure. Beyond that, yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure there. I put a kicker on here for you. I put a kicker. The good kicker available in free agency, Robbie Gould, who did miss more field goals in the regular season than Brett Maher did. He has been a longtime good kicker. I don't know what the market looks like for him. You can sign a kicker. Don't make it that expensive because they're very replaceable. I mean, you found Brett Maher off the streets again last year. He's instantly better than Greg Zerline was. Have competition. Don't commit yourself to multiple years to a kicker. That's how you get yourself in trouble. Three more names here. The three visits from Monday for the Dallas Cowboys. Ronald Jones, Chuma Adoga, and Traven Howard. Perhaps the Cowboys add one of those guys. If they do sign, I bet the guaranteed money is low. All right, grade the Cowboys offseason so far. And then I'm going to sip some water. I'm the, giving Jerry an A, Tom. Yacht Jerry. Yacht Jerry, yes. The, yacht, yacht Jerry. The Yacht Boys have been on fire. He has been. Because he heard you, Tom. He heard you talking crap about him last week. We Monday. bullied the Cowboys into doing things. Or Prove me wrong. I do have a theory. We as fans. I think he just wants to go BPA so bad just in case Bijan's there. Where he's like, all right, fine. This offseason, I'll make moves. For the record, is how you should go about it anyway. Yeah. You should, you should try to take care of your needs with cheap veterans like a Gilmore, like a Cooks, cheap, you know, from the draft capital you gave up there. You can sign some cheap guys, too, in free agency to go BPA. Worst case, you take a player who kind of helps you a little bit in year one and then really steps up in year two. That's fine with me there. So 55% uh, say A, 39% say B, 5% say C, and 1% says D or F. Uh, we got to Ecuador, man, super chat earlier. Uh, Angel, however you pronounce it. 
Just $2? Thank you. I appreciate that. It is going to be a mailbag coming up next here on the Cowboys Report. So there are two ways to get on the show. Use hashtag Cowboys. That's get you in the comments section for Producer Patrick to find your questions, bring them up on screen. you got to use the hashtag uh, if you're just commenting. Otherwise, it will end up being buried there. Or Super Chat. If you Super Chat, you'll... We can skip the line for you, get you featured there on the show. If you want to grab some of the pre the old Super Chats, you know, feel free there too, Patch. Don't forget the Super Thanks there either. we got to give some shout-outs there. So, get your questions in. Hashtag Cowboys or Super Chat. TKG, I see your comment. You've trolled me successfully, and I'll just leave it uh, at that. That was a, uh, a well-done troll, my friend. You're watching the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, a mailbag for you guys on today's show. Answering all of your questions live, slash giving some love to some of the previous super thanks that have come in. First up, from Matt M. Jarrett Patterson, Notre Dame. I think a guard is a must. Who do you think should take and what round? I got Patterson some point on day three. I don't love the interior offensive guard class. Uh, Skronsky's not going to be there for you, most likely. So... Osiris Torrance, Steve Avila, Cody Mock, maybe on the second round. Those names start to make some sense. I don't think Avila gets to you in round two. If he does, I'm sprinting to the podium. Could be like your worst-case fallback round one option. Osiris Torrance in that round one category too. Uh, if you want a good guard, kind of got to take one a little bit earlier, I think, this year. Jeremy Chugs is burner. If a guy like Joey Porter Jr. or JSN slides 26, do you take him? He's like too good of a prospect to let walk in case of a CD scenario. Yeah, if one of those guys are there, I'm doing it. Uh, I'll take Jackson Smith and Jigba, and then I'll move on from Cooks next year, and I've got four good receivers, and that way, in case my gap actually is broken, I'm not scrambling again next year. If JPJ J is there, cool, I'm taking him, and I'll move on in the next from the draft to the next draft of Gilmore and Joseph and Wright, and I'll have JPJ as my other corner with Trayvon Diggs. If one of those guys are there, yes, I, I would him, especially JPJ. You're seeing some super thanks here. It's a, it's a feature on YouTube. In the past, you could only donate in a, in, in a live video. Now, you can donate outside of live videos. And just like we do for super chats, we'll answer your super thanks question as well. But click the thanks icon. We appreciate your support here. Every super thanks is a shout out on the Cowboys Report. William Meehan, uh, what is the chance we drop to DT in the first or second round? Better since you took care of your glaring needs at wide receiver two and at cornerback. It sets you up. If you want to, you can take a DT. Now, do they are, are they going to overlook the size issues for a um, Ekwaja Kansi? Is Brian Brzee a good enough player for them right now in, in round one? Mozzie Smith, does someone fall to the second round? And uh, Asiaka Ika, something along those lines. So better now that they have added a defensive tackle. Cowboy 85, this one came in before. Isaac Suimalo signed, so cross him off this. Dalton Reisner replacement there. Also signed Bobby Wagner. Uh, I would have some interest uh, in, in looking at the, the wide receiver or the, uh, the offensive line market, et cetera, uh, linebacker market. If it's cheap enough, Cowboys have about $10 million in cap space here. All right, so what team has won free agency so far? Yes, we can include... The um, the trades involved there. What team has won free agency so far? Go ahead and sound off for me in the comment section of today's show, especially if the ad break comes here on YouTube. Here's the TKG troll one. How about we draft a kicker in the first round? Uh, you draft a kicker in the first round. Your organization should be fired into the sun, banned forever. Rashard Lee, what about Jack Campbell out of Iowa? That's the Iowa linebacker, by the way, folks. Uh, not in round one. Round two, round three, if he gets to you somehow, I would have some interest there. Um, the player comp athletically is actually Leighton Vander Esch. Uh, I think he's a pretty decent comp for his play style overall as well. Surprisingly great athletic tester. Really big player too. Uh, decent linebacker class. I wouldn't be opposed to taking one again, although I kind of want to see what Damone Clark and Cox out can do for you. Leroy Pearson, what is it with cap space wise? Uh, as of Monday... You're at about $10 million. There's some flexibility, wiggle room, adjustment stuff mixed in there. It's different numbers on different sites because something gets calculated a little bit differently with incentives, whatever. So around $10 million plus you'll get $10 million after June 1st from Zeke Elliott as well. 
from Serial Killer. Is Kelvin Joseph in roster trouble? Yes. Yes, he is. Trayvon Diggs, Stephon Gilmore, Deron Bland. I would say Israel Mukwamu are roster locks, knowing that, you know, Mukwamu is a uh, corner safety hybrid these days. Leaves Jordan Lewis, Deshaun Wright, Kelvin Joseph, and I assume CJ Goodwin back on special teams. So that means all of a sudden you're kind of hovering with not all those guys are going to make the roster. Somebody at that point is going to have to be cut. And given what I consider to be some frustration uh, from the Cowboys organization as it relates to Kelvin Joseph and just the everything about him, yeah, boss man fat's in trouble. Will he make the roster? Why for yes and for no? Sound off for me in the comment section of today's video. Final 53, he's in trouble. Marcus Arnold, trade Dak for Lamar. Tell me why, why not? So ignoring the money, because the money is why not. You, you, you can't make it happen. You can't be paying Dak a bunch of money and then pay Lamar $50 million guaranteed, whatever he, he ends up wanting there. The issue with Dak has been you haven't won enough in the playoffs. You've done everything else. You, you're over for, your, for the course of your career. The numbers have been top 10. The wins have been top 10. The playoff wins are actually still top 10, but they're lacking in terms of these results that we want. So the issue I run into is you have another great quarterback, Lamar Jackson, who I love, who also doesn't have playoff success and has injury problems. Well, that sounds very familiar. Maybe it's six versus a seven, whatever scale we want to use. But MVP for Lamar helps a couple years ago, but the issues are actually still the issues that you've had in recent years. Now, today's show is sponsored by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning and it makes me feel prepared to take on my day. Once I got baby Olivia set up with her breakfast, I make my own AG1. And I don't feel the need for caffeine in the morning anymore. And I feel energized throughout the day. Plus, AG1 empowers the gut for whole body health. Covering my nutritional base of the day literally couldn't be any easier. That's why I trust Athletic Greens. I mix one small group of AG1 with water, drink it first thing each morning, done, just like that. And I like that it costs less than $3 a day. It's a pretty good deal, if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. It's the old win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Links in the comments section and the description of today's show. Ragnarok Howell, uh, round one, take O-line. Round two, tight end, take a running back. This sound good? If the right guys are there, yes. What you will run into is not setting yourself up of, well, all the linemen are gone, or all the tight ends in round two are gone, and now you're reaching for a position. So in a bubble, sure, but it has to have the right guys there for you. Zach Storm on nine, Chad Ryland round one, some to a six year, two hundred million dollars. That's the is that the Maryland kicker? E EMU kicker? That's one of the kickers for him. So the answer is no, but I appreciate the troll there, Zach Thor. Well done. All right, next up, Alicia Melendez. Sign Bobby Wagner, trade for a good old lineman. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm down to sign Bobby Wagner. I know the cost to come down for the Cowboys to do it, but longer he goes, maybe there's a chance still. Uh, as for trading for an offensive lineman, who are you going to get that's available? Uh, it's a good idea, but, I mean, look what Connor McGovern got, got. He was not that good. He got $7 million a year or something like that. So trading for a lineman, I like the idea. I don't know who that is, though, in the end. Now, if you love the Cowboys, make sure you're subscribed. We'll be live when big news happens. We'll be live for the NFL Draft some, too. Do not miss out on anything Cowboys related here on the Cowboys Report. It's YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. From Gangsta Big Chungus, thoughts on how Mike McCarthy's play calling will go? Don't know. Um, 
hopeful is maybe my one word for it. Uh, I think you will see less hitches, but the terminology staying the same. It's not going to be a drastic departure for the offense. Um, I think some of the philosophy stuff will change. I think your hitches are gone, and slant flats is, is the new go-to play call there, which is also prone to interceptions because corners can sit on it. That's, that's a bit dangerous there. Um, so I hope I, I will trade a couple points per game from the highs if it's a little bit more consistent, especially in the playoffs, which is, it's a very tough bar. We're talking like, hey, you have to be a top four team. That's a high bar to clear. But that's where we're at for the Dallas Cowboys. Cam Kramer. Why do people call him Cooks Cooked? I'm claiming we didn't get OBJ or Diop when Cooks is the youngest of the three. If, if our concern is Cooks is washed, but we're saying Odell Beckham's not, I don't really get what, what we're going for. Uh, different metrics, I think maybe they just... They wanted OBJ. They wanted Hopkins, and they're mad they didn't get him. I do not think Brandon Cooks is cooked. I think he might cook some teams, though, this year. Banned for life. Well, who is your dream round one target? You know, I don't, I don't know anymore. Um, before the Stephon Gilmore trade, it was Joey Porter Jr. But now you don't need a, a, uh, a corner. I don't think he's going to be there, but I would love Peter Skaronsky. I, I don't think he gets out of the top 16. Uh, but if he's there, I'm all for it. That's probably an unrealistic dream, but you did say dream. I think you're in a position where there will be players on the board, and because you're filling your needs, we're not going to be as in shambles as maybe we were when they didn't get the corner that they desperately wanted or the uh, the other guard they desperately wanted and had to settle for Tyler Smith, which ended up worked out great both times. Cowboys do do a good job in round one. So who do you want the Cowboys to take in this year's NFL draft? Any player... You can go any round if you want. Sound off for me in the comments section. P Money, if Darnell Washington is available at 26, should we take him? I wouldn't be mad at it. Tell you, tell you that one. Uh, you're getting an impact tight end who's a really gifted football player. It was freak size, great blocker. I am higher on him than most. 26 for a tight end in general is pushing it, but I, I, I would be excited. I mean, that's a... Blocking red zone nightmare. Leroy Pearson Jr., round one, Osiris Torrance. Round two, Sam Laporta. So it's the Florida guard, Iowa tight end. So you mean A.T. Perry, wide receiver from Wake Forest. Uh, Texas defense tackle, Moro Ojomo. Uh, I think I pronounced that correctly. Uh, Dorian Williams, linebacker from uh, Tulane. Muhammad Ibrahim out of Minnesota, the running back. And is it Muhammad Diabate? It's, it's the, it's, I think it's the Virginia edge. Let me double check that. Uh, let me check here. It's, yeah, Mohamed Diabate out of, or is that the, the Utah? I might, that might be the Utah edge. Who began his career at four. That, that's who we're talking about, right? I think that's who we're talking about. Um, not Virginia, Utah. Um, I might go running back a bit earlier. Uh, Ibrahim himself, injury problems. Uh, you don't know if you need A.T. Perry, but in general, you're drafting some damn good football players. If that's your draft class haul, I, I, I would give that at least a B plus, if not an A. Shard Lee. Tom, what's your offense? What would what would your offense look like? Uh, if I were in charge of calling games, I would run a Mickey Mouse offense. I would run read options. I'd run inside zones. I'd run some outside zones. I'd run four verts, the occasional slant, some strong fl flood, mix in some play action. I would run a Mickey Mouse offense. It's also my NCA 14 offense, which I'm really good at because I had no life. Um, but I would be a terrible NFL offense coordinator because I would not have the, the creativity flexibility to get off of my 10 plays. Sergeant E76, who would you sign next year that aren't one of our own? Next year, I or sign next, sign next. Um, Puna, I would look at, see what the money looks like. I'm fine at this point to look at the money and have that be a factor. I would look at Puna Ford. Uh, I would look at Dalton Reisner. I would look at Bobby Wagner, see if I can't get one, maybe two of those players and really go BPM draft. Plus, I'm also going to bring back Hankins, and uh, I draft an edge, frankly. Chris B., sign a DT and an O lineman and draft Robinson. I'm in. I have said it before, and I will say it again. If the Cowboys address all of their needs in free agency, at least in the short term, I would have more interest in drafting a running back in round one. And it would appear that is what we're trending towards. Now, I still don't think Bijan gets to you, but if he's there, he's going to be the number one player on my board. All right, what do you like the most, DT or F? 
Ah, he got it. He I got it. That. Draft trades or Sneaky, free agency. Tom. What Sneaky. do you enjoy more? Let me know in the comment section. D, T, or F. By the way, do we have a, a loop available for this? Yeah. Nice. We'll do that. D, T, or F. Alicia says D. Tar Heel Cowboy says D. Uh, Dan liked that joke, too. <laughs> Draft has always been the case for the Cowboys. This year, it's trades over yeah. free agency. They've been busy in the trade market. It makes it fun. Get those votes in. Some more Super Chats coming here from The Prune. $2. Thank you, The Prune. I appreciate that. YouTube J, uh, Nolan Smith, Dan Henley. Oh, sorry. Edge from Georgia, Nolan Smith. i got to remember the, the, the player in school name. Uh, Washington State linebacker, Dan Henley. Houston receiver, Nathaniel Tank Dell. Uh, McBride. Which McBride are we going for? Oh, the, the running back McBride, right? I think that's what we're talking about there. Um, Dwayne McBride, running back from UAB. Uh, and Texas defense tackle, Moro Ajomo, all uh, from off my mock. Tank Dell would be a big size change for them. Frankly, so would McBride to an extent. I don't think Nolan Smith gets to you, but that's a heavier than expected defensive investment. But you got good football players and great value at all, at, at all picks. So I'd give that at least, at least a B plus. Actually, it might, it might just be a full on A. Michael Bradigan. Good DT away from me in the favorite NFC. Also, Ferguson going to be a top 10 tight end after next year. That would make me happy. There's definitely upside there with Ferguson. I would love a DT, a guy that can stop the run and help, help uh, push the pocket. Man, that'd be really fun. Chris B, not at all, but fun we haven't signed an actual outside free agent. Loving the offseason, though. This is fun. This is fun. Um, I am, I call it the player acquisition period you've acquired two starters two really good players who have they been free agents might have been among the most coveted players so i will not complain but it is at least a little bit funny that yeah uh at this point they uh they haven't added anybody uh in the actual free agency period so if more supers come in we'll come back to them but first the final portion of today's show you guys are watching the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Danny with the trades of Stephon Gilmore, of Brandon Cooks. The Cowboys draft plans have gone from, you need a corner, no, we need a receiver, we need this, whatever, to they could maybe just go straight BPA if they can fix one or two other holes. So in round one, who do you want the Dallas Cowboys to take? I'm going to break down my fairly lengthy list here on the show, but sound off for me in the comments section. Who do you want to draft in round one? Let's start with some names who shouldn't get to you, but if they do, got to have the conversation, right? That's Jalen Carter first up. He could slide in the NFL draft due to his off-field stuff. Uh, he showed up out at, of at, at shape for his pro day. Had, of course, the, the uh, car crash. Rick was driving that killed one of his teammates and a recruiting staff for Georgia that he was involved in there, which is just heartbreaking and unfortunate. I think Jalen Carter is going through some tough times right now. I feel bad for the person. For the team, if he does slide to you, that should actually be a bigger concern because why is everyone else passing on him? It's like the Reuben Foster thing potentially all over again. Offensive linemen. I think the top two guys here, Peter Skaronsky out of Northwestern and Paris Johnson Jr. from Ohio State, they should not be there. They should not make it to you. If they do, yes, uh, I think that is a... Sprint to the podium. Congrats, Tyron Smith. Now you are our swing tackle. Nolan Smith, next up, who tested off the charts good at his at the combine. Freak athlete there. I doubt gets to you. Same like Tyree Wilson is not going to get to you, right? Some of the other bigger defensive players up there. Will Anderson is not going to get to you. I think Nolan Smith's in that next tier. I don't think that Lucas Van Ness that Miles Murphy, et cetera, get to you. I think Van Ness and Murphy could easily both go top 20, and they're off the board. If they slide, it's probably a conversation worth having. Van Ness, kind of a George Karloftis type. Murphy is still more upside than production, et cetera. Um, he's a freak athlete. is really impressive there, too. But big difference there in the pressure rate. Van Ness has no real pass rush plan. Probably guy's going to be off the board for you. I would think Brian Branch is gone. And had you not retained Donovan Wilson, I would have been on the Brian Branch at 26 hype train. Since he's back, if he's there, I'll probably do it. Uh, but I doubt he ends up getting to you. So some bigger name defensive pieces that I'm a big fan of that probably aren't going to make it to you. 
Let's get then to the name that everyone wants to talk about. The number one Cowboys draft conversation piece, right? B. John Robinson is going to be a top five player on most non-positional value adjusted draft big boards. He is awesome football player, can pretty much do it all. Any of his cons are kind of nitpicking there, just as good of a prospect as the Zeeks, as the Saquons. But the league has changed. The positional value for running backs is not what it once was. If he's there, though, at 26, he will be the best player on the team's big board. So in that event, would you draft Bijan Robinson at number 26? Why for yes and for no? Sound off for me in the comments section. You know, Jameer Gibbs, who actually put Brian Branch's face on there, my bad. Uh, Jameer Gibbs might be a nice piece for you. Athletic, dynamic, running back in the Alvin Kamara mold, but... Again, do you want to draft running back in the first round? I'm not so sure. Now, with the trade for Stephon Gilmore, cornerback is no longer as big of a need. In the event somehow that Christian Gonzalez, Devin Witherspoon, Joy Porter Jr., whoever it ends up being, slides to you in round one, you still make the pick. Uh, good chance they're all gone top 15 or sooner. Maybe JPJ could slide. I, I would take them, but... I think they're going to be gone. So th those were my pipe dreams earlier. Now they're in okay shape. Now, if you are a fan of the NFL Draft, make sure you're subscribed to our NFL Draft YouTube channel. This will be the pinned comment, actually, on today's video. Go subscribe, youtube.com slash chat NFL. The quarterback conversation, the receiver conversation, it's the exact same thing. Better chance that one of these guys gets to you, Jordan Addison, Quinton Johnston, Jackson Smith in Jigba could slide to pick number 26 because of the value, because you can move on from Cooks after a year and who knows about Jalen Tolbert. If one of them gets to you at 26, I would have no complaints making that pick. Let's talk offensive line now. And depending on what else they do in the coming days and weeks, O-line could be an easy fallback option for the Dallas Cowboys. I am a big fan of Osiris Torrance. I love his game. I know he's not the best athlete, but he's a mauler in the run game. I think play left guard for now, and maybe down the road kick over to, to the right side to replace Zach Martin. Now, Steve Avila is more of a typical left guard. Has some center background. He's going to play guard in the NFL, I believe. I think, this, I think he, and I'll go with John Michael Schmitz here too, are the... You got washed out with all your players. All the guys you wanted were gone. They went with the first 25 picks. You're just you're, you're, the, the board got, got picked over. You're just taking the best linemen for you. I think Steve Avila, John Michael Schmitz could fit that category. Schmitz plays guard for a year, takes over at center. Avila could be your ultimate fallback pick in round one. Uh, Broderick Jones, next up here, out of Georgia. I think he's gone early, but he could be a left tackle option for you. Darnell Wright, and I'll go with Dewan Jones here, back-to-back -back out of Ohio State. Uh, potential later round one picks. Jones, I think more in the second round for me. Uh, at right tackle, if you do not trust Terrence Steele long-term, which I think the Cowboys do, the rehab has gone pretty well, those two players then start to make some sense in the back end of round one. But I would not be surprised if one of those interior linemen end up being the round one pick. Dallas loves to get the best player at their position in the draft, in, in round one. Those first three names they would claim would satisfy that requirement, whoever it would end up being. What is your confidence level here in the Dallas Cowboys' ability to just draft good football players? Overall, yeah, it's better than most teams, but maybe not quite a 10. Sound off, confidence level in the Cowboys when it comes to drafting. One to 10 in the comment section. Let's talk tight ends here. All four, Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, Darnell Washington, Luke Musgrave. Four potential round one picks. Now, I bet one of them is gone, if not two of them are gone, come your time on the clock. Uh, Michael Mayer is your best in-line, prototypical Witten-esque tight end. He can block, he can catch. He's a good enough athlete, not a premier one. Dalton Kincaid as a pass catcher is really good. Uh, both those guys had great production at Utah. He offers you some seam-stretching ability. Uh, he's been linked quite a bit to Dallas as of late. Darnell Washington is, has been one of my guys. Producer Patrick knows. Been on him for a while. The size is unbelievable. He is a almost, if, if you want a great blocker, here you go. 
Uh, tested off the charts, great too, but limited production, uh, a little stiff uh, to an extent in the film, but he tested like, like it wasn't stiff, so it makes me feel better there. I would have, I, I think he's going to be great. I, I, I would gamble on him in the back end of round one. I don't love Luke Musgrave as much. Athletic freak at tight end, limited production, some drops, and a lot of small sample size there. But if you want a great tight end in round one, these are your guys to pair with Ferguson Hendershot and have some fun with multiple tight end packages. With all the moves the Cowboys have made, I am more interested now in gambling on one of these defensive tackles. And Kalijah Kansi is an outlier for this team. In a class full of outliers, Kansi is profoundly undersized. He is smaller than Aaron Donald, but he's a fantastic athlete at his size. I, I would have some interest in, in taking him if the board falls a potential way for you in, in the class. But there, there, are, there, there are concerns there with the size. That, that has to be acknowledged there. Mozzie Smith, meanwhile, bigger body. He's a fatty, but he's a good athlete too. Offers some burst. Has not yet put it together as a pass rusher. I'd feel better about him in round two than round one, but you're at the back of round one. It's not that different. Brian Brzee is a five-star recruit, great athlete, has not yet produced in the way he needs to. I would be scared of drafting him because he, 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 he could be great. He could also flame out pretty quickly, kind of like Javon Kinlaw to an extent. Drew Sanders at Arkansas, top linebacker this year. You could throw in a Trenton Simpson, Drew Sanders, whatever. Uh, Arkansas picked three times, or two times, two times from the Cowboys. It was uh, uh, Felix Jones and John Rick. Ridgeway, since the Jones boys took over, but Sanders is a, is a great athlete, um, long player too, offers some pass rush value, kind of reminds me of, of Anthony Barr to an extent. Now, if you want non-stop Cowboys coverage this offseason, then subscribe. Link to the bottom of your screen, don't miss out on anything here, whether it's Cowboys free agency or, of course, Cowboys draft coverage. Some other back end of round one, slash maybe they fall into round two, edge targets, B.J. Ojolari, Isaiah Foskey, Keon White. If you want to get another pass rusher, three names that stand out there. Uh, Will McDonald cannot, cannot rush the passer, or cannot stop the run, but he's a great pass rusher, excuse me. Felix Enudike Yazama out of Kansas State. Cowboys met with him. I wonder if they're looking at some of these guys. Maybe one falls to you in round two, and it makes sense there. And then, toughest name in the class, Eddie Tamiwa at Abare, aka Tommy at Abare at a Northwestern. Undersized. Is he a, is he a DT? Is he a defensive end? Is he a hybrid? He played a lot of edge for Northwestern. Really impressive athlete, much like Clyde Cancy, fits the uh, size outlier mold. Some more names coming. But what position will the Cowboys draft in round one this year? Sound off for me in the comment section right now. Some more draft targets. And these five names would have been higher up on the, the list. We didn't really rank them, but they would have been mentioned a lot earlier if you hadn't traded for Stephon Gilmore and if you hadn't dra uh, traded for Brandon Cooks. You could still take a Zay Flowers, a Hyatt, two skinny guys who might not fit the Cowboys' more typical M.O. yet. The cornerbacks, Deontay Banks, Emmanuel Forbes, Cam Smith. Banks or Forbes I thought were great round one options, but now that you have Gilmore... Maybe you just take BPA. That could still be one of these guys. Maybe Banks or Forbes, even though Banks maybe didn't interview that great. And Forbes is, you know, 166 pounds, which is insane. But those guys could still be the best guy on your board. But now you don't have to take a corner or have to take, take a wide receiver. You can if you want to, but it's closer to pure BPA now for Dallas. All right, grade the Cowboys offseason so far. A, B, C, D, or F. Get those votes in as we get caught up on all of the Super Chats that have come in here so far in between our final segment here. Uh, next up, from Michael. Got to get that DT with Osa to break out. The one thing you're missing is that dynamic three technique. Very tough to find. I doubt you can trade for one. I would love a, a, a Buckner, a Simmons. I campaigned two years ago for Quinn Williams super hard. It didn't end up happening. So, yeah, I would love that impact defensive tackle. Massive Matt, can Isaac Alarcone be our answer at DT? I'll give you guys the actual answer. It's almost assuredly no. Never say never. That He works hard. The Cowboys like that about him. He 
did some decent things on the defensive line, but you're asking a lot for a player to make the switch to D-line and fix everything. I think if he makes the practice squad, that's a pretty big win this year for Isaac. Leroy Pearson Jr. Zach Martin is 32. When do you start considering his replacement draft-wise? How bad do you have to finish to get Marvin Harrison Jr.? So, I think you have to consider Zach Martin, but it's still in the insurance category. Um, I think you'll look for a guy on day three, because I don't think you want to spend your first or second or even third round pick on a pure backup for what could be could be three years, right? Like, there's a chance that for three years, you just don't have a... a, a uh, a guard in there who's playing for you. That kind of defeats the value. So keep an eye on it for some day three developmental pieces. That's kind of where, where I'm at. Marvin Harrison Jr., top five. Good luck. <laughs> Gotham guy. Uh, after seeing Kincaid highlights, I don't want Schultz back regardless of the cost. If Kincaid falls to the Cowboys, pick him and, and draft a RB in a second. Uh, always be careful of highlights. You know, this can be a bit deceptive, but I think talent-wise, you're, you're still right about him. Um... I, I probably wouldn't take Kincaid over Bijan, but I'd take him over all the other backs in this year's class. Zach Store and I, if the Cowboys signed Schultz to four years, $36 million, are, are you happy? I mean, I wouldn't hate it. That's You could probably backload that deal, could add for two or three years if you had to. You're paying him $9 million bucks a year. That is below market cost for a player of, of, of Schultz's caliber. I also wouldn't be mind if he signed that somewhere else. I get a comp pick, and I take a tight end this year. I think there is some flexibility there, so I don't have to rush into it at tight end. YouTube J, Brian Brzee, Edeboare, Dell, Deuce Vaughn. It's the names again. Clemson defense tackle, Brian Brzee. Northwestern defensive lineman, Tommy Edeboare. Uh, Houston receiver, Tank Dell. Kansas State running back, Deuce Vaughn. Uh, Dorian Williams, linebacker from Tulane. Ventrell Miller, I think, is I think is the Florida linebacker. Let me double check that. I think that's the Florida linebacker. Survey says yes, Florida linebacker. And Malik Cunningham, quarterback from Louisville, all from PFF mock draft part two. I don't know if they would go two straight front seven players, take no linemen, and go with two of the smallest players in their class. Brzee terrifies me, but I'm on board with everything else in that mock draft. I'll I'll give it a B minus. Are you a diehard Cowboys fan? If you are, make sure that you guys are subscribed to us here at the Cowboys Report. Free videos every single day right here on the channel. If you guys missed anything on today's live show, it'll come up on loop one time for you. Cowboys rumors and some news. Cowboys top free agent targets left. A Cowboys mailbag answering all of your questions. And some Cowboys NFL draft targets in round one. A pretty long list of names there. So if you missed anything on today's show, it's all coming up on Loop right now. Today's Cowboys report is made possible by Kinzuri. If you are a short king, if you're trying to get the ultimate height hack in your shoes, Kinzuri is the answer. 15% off on top of their up to 30% site-wide sale at Kinzuri.com slash chat when you use promo code chat. More on them later on in today's show. Let's begin with the future of one Dalton Schultz. Surprisingly, Schultz remains unsigned, and the Cowboys have been prepared this offseason to move on from Dalton Schultz. But the longer he goes unsigned, the better chance there is that the Cowboys and Schultz say, you know what, let's get back together for a year and see what ends up happening. I wonder if a cheap one-year deal could be in the cards if the market drops as low as it has for other tight ends, such as uh, Mike Isicki. But I saw guys get $7 million who aren't good at tight end. Who the Vikings sign again, Patrick? Josh Oliver got $7 million. At least it was announced as 7 That makes no sense. Schultz is way better than Josh Oliver. Unfortunately for Schultz and others at the position, the tight end market is bad. The tight end market has not been a... a a strong result so far at the at the grouping. And I think it's in large part due to a strong draft class that has brought Dalton Schultz, or at least the offers for a player like Schultz. There is a chance still for a return. 
Uh, there aren't that many teams in the obvious market for a tight end. Green Bay stands out. They're maybe taking one in round one. The Bengals could be a great one-year buy low, go cash out next offseason because uh, you get to get one-on-one -on -one matchups nonstop, which you didn't always get this year. But a return is possible, if still a bit unlikely, for the Dallas Cowboys and Dalton Schultz. Schultz was a lot better in 2021. 2022, missed some time. Also, big difference in his production with Cooper Rush versus Dak Prescott. And I do believe there was a path or an offer for Schultz, probably from Dallas, around the $12 million range. I think that was last year. And David Njoku got more than what Dalton Schultz was offered in that three-year reported $36 million deal, according to Albert Breer. Understandable, he wanted to cash in and get more. He ain't going to get more. Uh, he's not going to get $12 million open market. He might not even get 10 might get more like 7 from that standpoint. And the Cowboys have tight ends. Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot. Heck, Sean McEwen is your three or your four. It's actually a pretty good grouping. And given how great the tight end class is this year, maybe you want to take one and say, Schultz, you know what? We love you. We appreciate everything you did for us. We're going to go in a much cheaper and younger direction. So what do you want to do? Do you want to bring back Dalton Schultz? Yes or no, you can sound off for me at the pinned comments of today's video. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there. Yes or no, do you want to bring back Dalton Schultz? To summarize some of the pros and cons, right? He clearly works well with Dak Prescott. That chemistry is there. And it's there in a way that, you know, it wasn't there for Russian Schultz. He is still a quality tight end option. Is he a superstar? No. Is he a replacement level player? No. And the cost should be lower now. There would also be more money spent at the tight end position. And that's maybe not something Dallas wants to do. Would stop your young guys from playing, and it's a loaded tight end class. You don't have to re-sign Schultz because you can get a good player, I believe, in the draft. I would also wonder if there's some, maybe this is all speculation, some bad blood to an extent, to an extent, with Schultz and the Cowboys because Schultz could have gotten, he could have gotten $14 million last offseason. I think the Jets would have given it to him. Doesn't hit the open market. Has to play on the franchise tag for a year. Tries to cash in this offseason. And now is sitting with, hey, he might get less than he got franchise tag for. That is unideal for a player of Schultz's caliber. Some more rumors coming up and news too. But first, today's Cowboys report is presented by Kinzuri. If you're tired of feeling insecure about your hype, height, excuse me, Kinzuri makes shoes add to 2.8 inches to your height discreetly. Women get heels. Makeup, push-up bras, so why can't men get a confidence boost too? We're all the same height lying down anyway, if you know what I mean. Kinzuri shoes not only height boosting, but also stylish and comfortable. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes, but fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. The height insoles are built into the shoes, so it's the ultimate height hack. For a limited time, Kinzuri is offering our viewers an exclusive 15% on top of the up to 30% site-wide discount. Use code CHAT, that's C-H-A-T, at Kinzuri.com slash it to get up to 45% off. Don't wait any longer. Upgrade your shoe game and confidence at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I.com slash chat. If you want to get high, put on a pair of Kinzuri's. Link to that is in the comment section and the description of today's show. Again, that is 15% off on top of the up to 30% discount going on with Kinzuri. Check out today again. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. Kinzuri.com slash chat. Time for some free agency. More news here. The Cowboys have three players in for visits today. That is on Monday, March 20th. Ronald Jones, the former Chiefs and Bucks back. Chuma Adoga, the Jets offensive lineman. Former Jets and Falcons offensive lineman, I should say. Traven Howard, the former Rams linebacker. These would be what I would call their, their, their Trojan signings. They, they are protection just in case something doesn't go the way you planned it to go. Uh, from that standpoint, these are we don't these guys might not even get a, a roster or contract that guarantees them a roster spot. It could be a one year vet men for 25% guaranteed, making them cuttable if they need to be during the actual uh, 
preseason training camp. It just means you don't have to take a premium player in the first couple of rounds. But if the board falls the way you want it to, it doesn't stop you from taking that type of player. It's, it's the protection signing there. Ronald Jones flashed in 2020. I was a big fan of his game coming out of USC. He had the explosiveness that, that I loved and then quickly fell out of favor again in Tampa and barely played at all for the Chiefs. He would not cost you very much money. Chuma Dogu, the Cowboys had been briefly linked to when the Tyron Smith injury happened as a maybe trade target at various points throughout. Uh, Adoga in for a visit. Not the best career stats, but he's played all over the offensive line. I wouldn't call him your sixth offensive lineman, but if he's like your seventh or eighth lineman, maybe ninth too, then it starts to make some sense. Traven Howard briefly overlapped with Bones Fossil in Los Angeles as a predominantly special teamer. And with Luke Gifford now a free agent, there's your Jabril Cox, Devin Harper bonus insurance. Uh, in the event that they sign, you know, we'll, we'll see what the contracts look like for their uh, roster spot being guaranteed there. But name a player who you want to sign in NFL free agency. Maybe it's a bigger name than three admittedly lesser names from that standpoint. Sound off for me in the comments section. While you're down there, make sure you guys are subscribed. When the Cowboys make moves, we make the news videos. Hit that sub button for free ones multiple times per day. You got three today, including the live. Probably two tomorrow, two throughout the week there. Don't miss out on anything Cowboys related. YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. I did want to probably for the last time briefly mention the Odell Beckham situation. Uh, the Cowboys, of course, have long been linked to uh, Odell Beckham. The signing of Brandon Cook, or the trade, I should say, excuse me, the trade for Brandon Cooks, my bad, uh, basically takes the Cowboys out of the running. You're, you're not going to pay OBJ and be paying Brandon Cooks and got Gallup and got Lamb. That just isn't, unless there's an injury to somebody, knock on wood, that's not going to be a path that they end up pursuing there. So all of the OBJ drama appears over. And with what you have at wide receiver, outside of a draft pick, you know, maybe you re-sign T.Y. Hilton to a cheap one-year deal. Let him compete for the wide receiver four role alongside a guy like a Jalen Tolbert, a Kevante Turpin. I think if you do re-sign Hilton, it puts Sima Fihoko in kind of a dangerous spot roster-wise. You could still draft somebody if the right guy falls to you, but now you don't have to take a wide receiver early on, especially if you end up do re-signing Hilton, which we'll see on that standpoint there. In the end, I like trading for Cooks over signing Odell Beckham. I think Cooks is a safer player, as weird as that might sound with the concussion history and the down year, but he's going from Davis Mills and Kyle Allen and Jeff Driscoll to Dak Prescott. That is a massive upgrade at the quarterback spot for Brandon Cooks. Time for some other Cowboys free agency updates. Dante Fowler and Jonathan Hankins are on the Cowboys list per da uh, the Dallas Morning News of players they would like to re-sign. I am curious what Dante Fowler and or Hankins would end up commanding on the open market. Fowler did have six sacks last year. Really cooled off down the stretch, just like Dorrance Armstrong did. Um, Hankins was a big boost for you on the defensive line as a run stopper. I'm down to bring them back. As long as the cost is appropriate, that's especially more for Fowler. I think $3 million max for me because he's going to be my number four or five edge. I can find that guy pretty cheaply elsewhere and or in the draft. One more news item, Jake McQuaid is gone. The long snapper who had been here for two years, got hurt this year, uh, is now a member of the Detroit Lions. They have signed him. Matt Overton is a free agent, by the way. Keep note of that one. He could come back. And Todd Archer also mentioned Trent Sieg, who had been recently released by the Raiders as a possible long snapper candidate. Remember the rules of long snapper. We discuss you when you sign, when you make the roster, and then never again in the season or something probably went terribly wrong. All right, let's talk March Madness here, Patrick, if you want to unmute yourself here and chime in. Uh, is your bracket already busted? You guys at home chime in. Why for yes and for no? Is your bracket already busted? Yours is okay, Patrick. I'm okay right now, but for the most part, it's pretty much busted. I don't, I've lost three Final Four teams. It's brutal. Uh, March Madness, it gets you every year. You think you know basketball, you just find out you really don't. It just comes down to kids hitting threes. But yeah, my bracket, 
It's so, not as going as well so as I thought. Everyone's bracket is busted. Like yeah. uh, two two one seeds are already out. Like everyone's everyone's is busted. Yeah. Arizona, you, like you are in the seventy point four percentile right now. I'll take it. Now I'll, you have Xavier winning it all. <laughs> yes, I have. Which the which was a homer pick, and I respect you for it. Yeah. They they are not going to win it all. They're going to win it all. The uh, there are nineteen brackets in the uh, in the chat sports bracket pool this year. I don't know if everyone actually did theirs. Um, all but four of them are in the top fifty percentile still. Look at us. Sperry's at twenty one point four. He's at, he's at a rough go, but but his oh, champion's geez. still alive there. Uh, do you know who's in first? Is it you? It's me. Tom's in first. Me. I, That's incredible. I won last year, too. Back I, to I, back, Tom? 96.8%. Jeez. And the, the nice part is a lot of us picked Bama, which isn't a huge surprise. A couple UCLA's, uh, a Gonzaga from Will, Who's Texas. Who's your winner? I, I have Bama. Oh, you did. And, and there's okay. enough differences elsewhere that Bama will end up being okay. So I, I, I had Bama and Houston as, as my ones who were still in it. So it's been, uh, been, been fun. Is your it bracket is. busted? Why for yes and for no. Let's go quickly through these super chats here that came in. Yeah. And we can always re-hit them again in, in, the, in the mailbag, too. Uh, Marcus Arnold, trade Dak for Lamar. Tell me why, why not. Ignoring the money aspect where you just restructured Dak to, to get his cap hit down this year, but that would money that you would, be, you would owe him if you traded him still. Uh, ignoring the fact that Lamar wants even more money. If, if the money magically worked, I think what we're frustrated about is the lack of ideal playoff success for Dak Prescott, right? That's the, mm. and, and I think at some level, we are assigning 27 years of blame onto this current team, which are, are 27 years of, of utility, which isn't fair, but I, I get where we're coming from there. The solution then is Lamar Jackson, who has had worse playoff success than Dak Prescott. Yeah. So that's my concern. I, I think in general, and maybe it's just because it, it's our team, we tend to assign different standards for different players. And the standard that Dak Prescott has held up to, whether it's by us or by just big media, is not the same across the board. Mm -hmm. There are a handful of active quarterbacks who have had more playoff success than, than Prescott. We're talking the Rodgerses. I, I guess you can include Jalen Hurts now in that conversation. The, the Joe Burrows, the, the Mahomeses. It, it's a pretty small list. Uh, it's basically... These guys are your top five quarterbacks, right? Yeah. That's not what Dak Prescott is. I, I think Lamar is, is a just as good, if not better, than Dak, but all the concerns you have about Prescott, hey, the injuries, uh, passing, for example. Uh, Lamar's are actually even it's – it's, it's a bigger concern there. So I think it's six of one, maybe 6.5 of the other instead of a half dozen, but you're in the exact same ballpark there, so the cost to acquire it doesn't make much sense. Leroy Pearson Jr., Stephen Jones is definitely going to lowball Schultz now. Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, yeah, he is. Not that about that one. Will Marshall. Hello, Will. Hey, Tom. You are the man. Thank you, Will. Following Gilmore, who is the odd man slash men out of the crowded defensive backfield room? Assuming C.J. Goodwin makes your roster as a core special teamer, leaves maximum six spots open. Trayvon Diggs, Deron Bland, Jordan Lewis, if we want to count Israel Mukwamu there, that's one of them. Sean Wright, Kelvin Joseph, I don't think they're going to carry a, on that screen eight of those guys, and you still might draft a corner. So Diggs, Bland are, of course, locks. I think Mukwamu makes it as kind of like your super sub at safety and, and corner. Jordan Lewis can save $4 million w with a release. Sean Wright, Kelvin Joseph, those two are firmly in the playoff roster or, or playoff bubble uh this training camp time the rosh bubble it's those guys they might not make it from duh 1534 sam laporta in the third round if he's there i am in it is a great tight end class as i've said before i wonder if he even goes round two i think he he got hamstrung by the iowa offense being in, in a a war crime this year it was a disaster also the worst quarterback in college football history. uh terrible Possibly. quarterback terrible play calling it was not laporta's fault that the numbers were down he he was hamstrung by being stuck on a garbage offense sorry iowa fans but i know that they agree with me zach story on a nine she just, uh cowboys get mayor washington kincaid i would probably put the plurality of the odds on one of those three guys maybe it's kincaid um the Cowboys have done a good job in terms of investing uh, in the offseason with other needs. Tight end 
is a option uh, for the Cowboys early on. And any of those three guys, I'm a big Washington fan. I love Michael Mayer. I'd be fine with Kincaid. Could do a lot worse in round one there. Ecuador man, AOG. Uh, RB market is uh, so soft. Is Pollard tag a mistake? Maybe it's a mistake. Um, I think part of the running back market being soft is those guys aren't that good. Like the big three players, Barkley, Jacobs, and Pollard, they would have gotten more money than what, you know, Miles Sanders got from the Buffalo Bills. It was not that great of a deal there. Um, they they would have found a way to, to command bigger dollar figures. But I think if you had let Pollard hit the open market coming off the injury, I think you might have been able to find a pretty team-friendly deal to an extent. So mistake might be a little firm, but not perfect playing of the market. Yes, uh, I, I would agree on that front. This is the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, and with free agency underway, the Cowboys haven't actually signed an outside free agent at this point, but they have been busy and active. We're going to break down the top free agents left for the Dallas 